Have you ever heard of a wiki race? It's a game that I learned in my Digital Studies 101 class first semester of college. Basically, you search for anything on Wikipedia and then try to get to another specific page in as little time and clicks as possible. The catch is that you're only allowed to click on the link within the Wikipedia articles. Say your race started at Toy Story and you wanted to get to the page about piracy off the coast of Somalia. From Toy Story, you'd click on Tom Hanks, from there you'd click on Captain Phillips, and finally on Pirates. I quickly became obsessed with the degrees of Wikipedia it takes to get from one idea to another. Some were obvious, like elevator to water tank, only having one degree of separation. But I was more interested in the ominous, like the disambiguation page for the name Ella, only having four degrees of separation from Akigahara, the Japanese suicide forest. Most of those paths went through YouTube thanks to Logan Paul. I quickly became the best in my friend group, and then the best in my classes, and then the best on campus decided by multiple tournaments that the digital studies department hosted. It's pretty lame, I know, but there's not much else to do in a small town in Virginia. So, I did what I now always turn to when I was bored and out of answers. I searched the wiki. Common forums on wiki races were easy enough to find. The site has been around since 2001 and had grown exponentially ever since. But I wanted more. Thanks to my super geek, super sweet brother, I learned my way around a Tor browser before I graduated high school. I never did anything weird with it, just hopped on a Harry Potter fandom site my bio lab partner showed me in ninth grade. I might have also peaked at LSD prices in 2015 or so, but seriously, nothing worse than that. I double clicked the tiny purple and white icon that I still kept hidden in my applications folder, and started searching for games to play. Poor attempts at ARGs were listed everywhere. I made a mental note to come back to some of those, but something more interesting caught my eye. It was a simple post by a user named Gottestot, spelt with five T's. I made sure to copy and paste it correctly. All the T's are right. Just two words, or two words and a number, I guess. Johnny Gosh, 42621051, Elechilo. I had no idea what any of it meant at first, but the riddle called to me like an open closet door in the middle of a dark bedroom, just beckoning to answer. The first part wasn't hard to figure out. Johnny Gosh was a 12-year-old kid who disappeared in the 80s. Nothing too weird besides the fact that his mother swears he turned back up in 1997 to tell her he was kidnapped by not great people. I was scared for a second that something similar would happen to me, but I had taken all the right precautions. I paid for my VPN and used it constantly, checking it twice whenever I used the Tor browser. Besides, there was nothing that investigating a set of numbers could do to tip off kidnappers. It was that set of numbers that didn't make sense to me. I tried calling the first seven digits, but the answer sounded like a real-world business operation and nothing that would send me down a path of cryptic discovery. So, I immediately hung up. Google only came back with car parts anyway. After about 30 minutes of searching, I decided to give my mind a break while reading up on the initial Wikipedia page covering the Johnny Gosh disappearance. I don't know when exactly this became a way that I used to relax, but it felt nice to immerse myself in something I considered myself good at. It was set up similarly enough to any other biographical Wikipedia page. It amused me that the first hyperlink in the article led to the page outlining what a paperboy was, even before it got into details about when or where he disappeared from. It turns out that intrigue was the key to deciphering that seven digit number. If I counted the number of links on Johnny Gosh's Wikipedia article, the first was for a paperboy, the second was West Des Moines, the third Iowa, and the fourth link took me to an article explaining a concept that I don't feel comfortable including in here, even if it was just an email to myself. I guess look it up if you're that curious, future me. Four links. Four. 
I thought the number string was designated a Wikipedia path. I split up the rest of the digits logically. 4, 2, 6, 2, 10, 5, 1. I made the fifth number 10, because obviously, there couldn't be a zeroth link on a page. If one of the other numbers turned out to be 26 or 51, I would have to figure that out later, assuming this logic made sense in the first place. From the page I was currently on, I clicked the second link. Mental disorder. From there, mental health. Well-being. Six-factor model of psychological well-being. Personal development. Self-help. This was starting to sound like a pun of a bad Jordan Peterson joke. So, I had a destination. Self-help. I still wasn't sure what to do with this information. I guess the only thing that seemed like a logical response at the time to me was the reply to Gottesstadt's post. I decided to get cute with it and copy their signature, just to maximise the chance that they saw it. I made a quick forum account, named myself Sam Alley, then posted simply, Self-help, elect Chi Lo. I closed my laptop. I felt both sick and elated after the process. I was proud of getting to an answer, whether or not it was correct. But something still felt wrong. I chalked it up to something I had eaten. I closed my laptop and fell asleep. The next morning, I had nearly forgotten about my endeavour. When I came to class the next day, my professor seemed stunned. You're alive! He exclaimed. He was unusually overenthusiastic about students coming to class. It was a small seminar, so any missing person stifled the conversation. But the thing was, I never missed a class. Participation was a huge part of our grade, and the class itself was worth double credits because it was held every day of the week. I hadn't felt sick at all after I got a 24 hour long bug a month ago. I just smiled and brushed it off as him being forgetful. Even people with PhDs make simple social mistakes. Except, he wasn't the only one surprised to see me. Multiple friends made an effort to ask me if I was okay, or if I needed to talk to them about something. I finally broke. What are you talking about? I'm totally fine. I told the group of friends from my digital studies major classes that I was eating lunch with. Then, where were you yesterday? Here, I responded, skeptically. I thought it was a prank. No, you weren't. I tried texting, calling, and coming by your room, but you never answered. Yes, I was. Getting frustrated. We went to bingo last night. Bingo was Tuesday. Yesterday was Wednesday. I paused, convinced they were messing with me. A final... Shut up, followed by a small laugh coming only from me ended the conversation. Everyone ate in silence. Was I crazy? How could I have just been missing an entire day of my life? The elaborate prank theory was thrown out once I checked my phone and realised it was in fact Thursday. It just begged the question, where did my Wednesday go? I went through Gottesdott's gauntlets as often as they were given. It was the same number string every time. 42621051. Toynbee tiles to lumber. Sacred geometry to the London Bridge. Shanda Sherer to physics. Search. Click. 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 Copy. Paste. Repeat. That was my process every time, and every time I finished, I was greeted by a large sense of pride and a small sense of sickness. Nothing alarming, but just a reminder that I'm still human, no matter how good I am at internet metagames. Other forum users started getting annoyed at our call and response, but the issue was fixed quick enough. Gottesdott just started sending my starting points through every method imaginable. IM, email, text, letter, Mirror steam, trunk tree carving, even the bottom of my salad bar contained the beginnings of my new favourite game. I was so excited to get a new assignment 
that the unusual logistics my game master would have had to go through to get these to me never crossed my mind until I was too addicted to care. I knew they were for me though, because Elect Chi Lo was nearby every time, as was my new favorite eight digit number, 42621051. I was getting so fast that counting links became second nature to me. I thought I would start ignoring the actual text on all of the Wikipedia pages that I was visiting, but the opposite actually happened. My reading and processing became faster with each click. I was absorbing so much information, I could almost feel it entering my skin. My hairs would stand up and my eardrums would tingle, as if I was listening to ASMR. The feeling would elate more and more as I got closer to the final page. I stopped double checking my work, and I don't even think God to start was even reading my answers to see if I got it right. I posted, he gave me a new one, rinse and repeat. The information was fascinating. It was unlike anything I had ever studied before, and it was so applicable to what I was working towards. It felt like a game in of itself, because this information was scattered all over Wikipedia. Instead of being organized in any one place, bits and pieces were hidden in other articles. It was a game inside of a game, and I was getting very good at it. The gist of my findings is that there are certain articles in Wikipedia that can't be linked from anywhere else. They're called orphan pages. That's obviously not the interesting part. Certain groups have become interested in the hiding in plain sight aspect of Wikipedia. Crime families would hide hitman contracts inside of the Wikipedia pages of their targets. How they got past the army of editors is beyond me, but it wasn't just mobsters. Certain cults have started to use the platform as a way of preserving and disseminating information about who or what they worship. The cult of Cecil was the most common recurring example. Cecil was the name of the blind god, called by many names across cultures. Hodur, Samael, Yalbadoth, Azathoth. The modern worshippers just called him Cecil as the way to hide through modernization. According to various unverifiable paragraphs scattered throughout Wikipedia, the cult of Cecil was so comprehensive in their uploading of tomes, myths, and rites that the very essence of Cecil has been infused into the pages of Wikipedia. Obviously, they don't want just anyone to stumble on a digitized version of their destructive deity, so they scrub the rest of the website to ensure that only priests have access to these pages. Orphan pages for a blind god. I had just finished a quick got to start race as a way to relax after working on a semester end project when I suddenly smelled a putrid stench. It was a sewer crossed with rotten eggs and it engulfed everything in my room. I searched all over for a source, but neither under my bed nor in my fridge contained anything out of the ordinary. It was only after standing up from my squat in front of said fridge that I realized where it was coming from. It was me. My hair was almost as frizzy as it was greasy, swaying in one place only due to how caked and grime it was. My shirt collar smelled like fermented fish or a dirty retainer, and the armpit had deodorant stains thicker than my fingernails. Those were covered in grime too for the record. My underwear was... soiled and everything stunk terribly. I was almost too confused to be embarrassed by the whole thing. The stairs and dry heaves that I got from my floor mates on my way to the dorm bathroom made sure to rectify that. When I got out, I still got the stairs, but they were closer to wonder than disgust. I didn't know anybody around well enough to ask what the big deal was. The back of my mind already pieced together the likely explanation even though I couldn't believe it. How long was I gone? I asked my clearly worried friends as soon as they processed that I was back. A week maybe? Give or take two days? 
We all thought you went back home after your last episode. I swear, I was here the whole time. I really don't remember anything after Wednesday when I was working my homework in my room. You mean you were just sitting in your room for eight days? No food, no water, no bathroom? Yeah, I think so. That's impossible though. They all insisted that I go see someone, get hypnotized, get on meds, do anything to make me remember what happened in the last hundred hours of my life. The idea absolutely disgusted me though. I wanted, and still want, nobody inside my head. It was my space to do with as I please. If that involves weeks of research on new topics for Gottesdott, then so be it. That made me remember. The race. Was that the thing that was making me lose it? My time, my sanity, my cleanliness? I pushed it aside. These investigations were making me smarter, not dumber. There was no time before discovering Gottesdott's game that I felt as good as I do now. The skill I was developing made me feel alive. There was no way I was going to give that up. That day was the last time I saw my friends from school. Most of my time is devoted to the games now. I'm more cautious to eat, drink and pee regularly as to not cause another stink episode and draw attention to me. It would just be a bigger distraction down the line that would get in the way of everything. Euthanasia to the Jason Mraz album, no. The Zodiac Killer to Latin, disambiguation. Carl P. Schmidt to the provinces and territories of Canada. My list continued to grow and grow, as did my knowledge of the cult of Cecil. I felt as if I knew Cecil myself, an interpreter of his essences hidden from me and me alone to find. Still, every time I finished the race, I felt both extremely happy, but slightly sick. Like I had cheated somehow, I was feeling guilty from victory. The sickness half of it was slowly dying down, as if more and more races were my medication. All while the triumphant feeling of successful runs kept me coming back for more. I was given one final clue from who I now considered to be my closest friend. The one who guided me to learn far more than anyone could possibly teach me outside of my dorm room and inside the walls of the real university. I don't know how much time I'd spent alone in my room, but I did know that I had matured. A lot. I no longer had an appetite for what little food I had left in my desk drawers. My feet and back would ache whenever I forced myself to move to the restroom down the hall. Nobody was around to greet me anymore either. All signs that, to me, showed that I was pointed in the right direction, away from the outside and towards my prizes. My new starting point was different, slightly unclear. My name, 42621051, Cecil. I wish I could stay humble and pretend that his clue intimidated me or made me question my methods up to this point. It instead just validated how good I had actually gotten. I suspected it for a while. Gottestadt didn't have extra T's. It was missing spaces. Gott ist tot is the original German translation of Nietzsche's declaration that God is dead. The silence that followed my quick realization was deafening. If the game was making time go by faster before, it became a total crawl now. My breaths were calculated and measured, the movement on my trackpad even more so. What remained of my hunger and thirst were gone now. I knew it was time for me to ascend, as I had read so much about. Time for me to finally see as Cecil does, without eyes, but seeing everything. Everything else I had learned up to this point was so useless because it didn't allow me to actually see. Click. Philosophy. Everything I worked for was for this very moment. The ecstasy was unlike anything I had ever felt before. Not only was I good at something, but I was finally being rewarded for it. All my hard work 
paying off and being recognized by the blind god. Click, Greek language. I almost felt pity for all of my friends who ignored me. It wasn't until just now that I realized I hadn't heard from them since my stupid soling incident. I wasn't bothered since everything I needed was right here in front of me, but it was interesting to take notice of. Click, modern Greek. Nearly all physical sensations were gone. Cravings for food or drink no longer tied me down, wasted my time, made me human. I could go anywhere and do anything, but there was nothing I wanted to do except play with Cecil. All of it was a distraction, a necessary input to keep myself going towards the inevitable end. I've transcended that now. Click. Greek language. These double backs happen all the time with Cecil's games. When I was younger and just starting out, this kind of thing made me fear that I was somehow incorrect. Obviously, there can be circular loops in Wikipedia, but it made it seem like my progress was stalled. I now saw differently, proving that my sight before Cecil was never enough. Recognizing my clear improvement, I moved on. Click. Cyprus. I was ancient. Time hasn't meant much to me since I left my friends, my school, my physical form. It felt as if my first game was just a few days ago, but also that centuries of experience and worship have gotten me to where I am now. I am not ancient now. I am simply eternal, and my time for apotheosis has come. Cyprus. The final word. The page containing everything I needed to know for ascension was disguised as a simple list of trees. The idea made me giggle, and then laugh, and then fall over myself hysterical. How clever Cecil is, hiding the most powerful orphanage page behind a link containing a novice park ranger guidebook. It took me a while to get back on my feet and compose myself. The pain was sharp and excruciating, but simultaneously far away from my actual body, as if I could feel someone else's pain on the other side of my room. Click. I read the page. I read everything. It all went so fast, but I read it so deliberatively. Life, love, power. All of it spelled out so simply on a black and white web page. I felt nothing now. I became the words on the screen as I read them. All of Cecil's secrets about him and about us spilling out. The last sound I perceived was a low boom, followed by scraping metal along my linoleum floor. What followed wasn't quite silence, but the total absence of sound altogether. How could you describe the color blue to someone who was colorblind? My apotheosis has finished, and the good word of Cecil must be spread. I'll see you soon. The following writings were taken from missing person Ella Ames' email address. It appears she emailed them to herself as a form of digital diary. We are reaching out to see if anyone has any information regarding her disappearance. She is likely missing an eyeball, as one with a needle protruding from the pupil was an object of interest recovered from a dorm room. If anyone has any information about this symbol, or the whereabouts of Ella, please contact us as soon as possible. Thank you.